Hello, in this video we're going to be taking a look at SIRDS. So this is something you'll have seen in GCSE maths that's going to come up again at A level. So you're going to want to be confident with the rules of SIRDS and using these rules to answer questions. So let's start at the beginning with what SIRDS actually are. And I think the best way to think about this is if we take the square root of a number, okay, if we cannot simplify this down into a whole numbered answer, then we're dealing with a SIRD. Okay, and I'll now give you an example of something that wouldn't be a SIRD and something that would be. So, so we take the square root of 4, for example, which just means what number multiplied by itself gives us an answer of 4? Well, a possible answer, yeah, we could say is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. So I've simplified this square root down into a whole numbered answer, and so the square root of 4 is not a SIRD. But on the other hand, say we had the square root of 2. Well, what number can you think of any whole numbers that I can multiply by themselves to take me to 2? And none exist, so you can't, right? And so for that reason, the square root of 2 is what we would call a SIRD. So as well as knowing now what a SIRD is, we need to know some rules, okay, that we can use with SIRDs to help us answer some questions. And the first one is going to involve multiplication. So we'll look at a sort of a concrete example first with numbers, and then we'll look at the generic case. So say we had the square root of uh, 12, for example, okay? Could we rewrite this in any other way? Well, yeah, we could, right? We could say it's the square root of, say, 4 times 3, because 4 times 3 is 12. So it's the square root of 4 times 3, like so. Now, using our knowledge of indices, how else could I write this? Well, I know that anything to the power of a half is the same as square rooting it. So I could say that this is the same as 4 times 3, all to the power of 1 half. From here, we could distribute that power across the 4 and the 3. So it's the same as 4 to the power of 1 half multiplied by 3 to the power of a half. And remember, if something's to the power of a half, it just means we're going to square root it. So it's the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 4, well, what number multiplied by itself gives us 4? We looked at it a second ago, is 2. So it's just 2 times 3, or 2 root 3 is how we could write that. So the key thing we want to take away from this example is, say we have the square root of a number, say in this case 12. If I can represent that as two other numbers multiplied together, so in this case 4 times 3, then it's equal to the square root of one of them multiplied by the square root of the other. And so in a generic case, say we had the square root of, say, a times b, we could represent this as the square root of a multiplied by the square root of b. And this is the first rule that we want to use, and this is probably the one you're going to use most often. So the next one we're going to look at is involving fractions. So say we were looking at, say, the square root of, let me think of an example, say 9 over 16 then I can distribute this square root across the numerator and the denominator. So I could say this is equal to the square root of nine over the square root of 16. And so that would just give me three over four. And again, in a generic example, this would just be say the square root of a over b is equal to the square root of a divided by the square root of b. And you could use your laws of indices to go from this part here to this side here if you really wanted to show that it was true. Okay, so that's the second one. And the final one I think is probably the easiest and makes sort of a lot of sense. It just says if we take say the square root of a number, so for example the square root of 3, and we multiply it by itself, then that gives us the number inside of the square root. And the reason for that is pretty easy. So say we take the square root of a and we multiply it by the square root of a. Well from our laws of indices this is just a to the power of a half multiplied by a to the power of a half. Now we have the same base a, so we just add the powers. So a half plus a half is 1. So this gives us an answer of a to the power of 1, which is the same as a. Okay, so here are the rules of indices we're going to want to be aware of. Okay, and I think they're all pretty straightforward and make sense. So something you could be asked to do is to simplify uh, a square root of some number. Okay, which just means can we rewrite the number inside the square root as small as possible, or the goal is to make it as small as possible, or ideally, I guess, get rid of it. So how can we do that? Or get rid of the square root, I mean, not get rid of the number. So how can we do this? Well, we're going to use the first rule we looked at. And what we're going to do is try and write the number inside of the square root as some square number multiplied by something else. And so by square number, that is just a number where we take, say, an integer, multiply it by itself, and the answer of that would be a square number. So let's look at actually some examples. So 1 times 1 is 1. So 1 is a square number. 2 times 2 is 4. And so 4 is a square number. 3 times 3 is 9. So 9 is a square number. And so on. So 16... 25, 36, these are all square number examples. So can you think of a square number, okay, that I can multiply by something else to get to 12? And it's 
pretty obvious because we looked at it in the example above. We could say the square root of 12 is equal to the square root of 4, which is our square number because 2 times 2 is 4, multiplied by 3. From here, we could use our first rule of thirds to write this as the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 3. And so we could write this as 2 times the square root of 3, which is 2 root 3. Now, can we simplify this any more? Are there any square numbers we can use to make 3? No, there's not. So this is it in its most simplest form. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. So now we know how to simplify thirds, we can use it to answer questions like this. Say the square root of 27 plus the square root of 12. So how are we going to do this? Well, one by one, we'll just simplify them. So let's start off by simplifying it, uh, say the square root of 27. So are there any square numbers that we can use to make 27? So basically, are there any square number factors of 27? Well, we could use nine, right? So we could say it's the square root of nine multiplied by say three, because we get nine, 18, 27. Using our first rule of thirds we looked at, we can say this is the square root of nine multiplied by the square root of three. And so we could write this as three root three because the square root of nine is obviously three. Let's do the same now for the square root of 12. And in fact, we already answered it literally just here. And we got an answer of two root three. So that's our answer. So basically all this question is asking is let's write out the bits again. So we've got the square root of 27 was three root three. And then we wanted to add on to that the square root of 12, which was two root three. And so if I've got three root threes and I add on another two root threes, how many do I have in total? Well, I would have five root threes. So that would be the answer to that question. I think that's pretty straightforward. So let's now look at something called rationalizing the denominator that you would have definitely seen in GCSE maths. So rationalizing the denominator just means we want to eliminate the square root from the denominator of our fraction. And we're going to look at a couple examples. OK, so this is the easiest case you'll get where you just have sort of the square root of a number on its own. So to get rid of this, what we're going to do is multiply the fraction on the numerator and the denominator by whatever the denominator is. OK, and the reason we can do that, I'll just write it out and we'll talk about it. So three over root two, I'm just going to multiply by whatever the square root is on the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by root two over root two. Now, the reason I can do this is because it's not going to actually change my fraction because root two over root two is just equal to one. So it's the same as doing three root over root two multiplied by one. So if we do this, we're going to get three root two over root two times root two which using the last rule of thirds we looked at said that, well, it's just whatever's inside the square root. So it's just going to be two. And so that would be the answer. We've gotten rid of the square root on the denominator. And so we've rationalized the denominator. And the reason it's called rationalizing is because if we have a third like this on our denominator, it's what we call an irrational number, which means we couldn't express it uh, as a fraction with a integer numerator and denominator, or it can't be expressed as like a decimal that would ever end. So root two, if we expressed it as a decimal, just go on forever and never actually end, right? It would never repeat. So that was a nice, easy question. The harder variety is something that would look like this. And this is still quite a nice question. So we've got two over three plus root two. So if I were to multiply the top and bottom by just root two, like we did in the last example, let's see what we get. We would get, or well, we're writing it, multiplied by root two over root two. You can see this will give us two root two over three root two plus so we've still got this square root on the denominator, which we don't want. So how can we get rid of this? Well, what we're going to do, okay, is sort of take the opposite of it. So if we've got three plus root two, we're going to multiply top and bottom by three minus root two. And we're going to see how that works in a second. So let's do that. Let's now work it out. So on the top we're, or numerator, we're going to have two lots of three minus root two. And on our denominator, we're going to have three plus root two multiplied by three minus root two. So let's expand our numerator. So we've got two lots of three, which is gonna be six minus, well, two times minus root two, which is gonna be minus two root two. And on the denominator, let's do it a bit by bit. So we're gonna get three times three, which is gonna give us nine. Then we're gonna do three multiplied by negative root two, which is gonna give us minus three root two. Then we're gonna do two times three, which is gonna give us plus three root two. And then finally, we're going to do root two times minus root two. Well, what's that going to be? It's going to be negative two. Okay, remember there's a minus in front of it. So minus two. And the reason this works is you can see now we've got minus three root two plus three root two. So these are going to get canceled out. And so we could write this as six minus two root two over nine minus two, which is just going to give us seven. And we've rationalized the denominator. 
So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share. I'll link the rest of this Preparing for A-Level Maths playlist in the description. And if you've finished it, you can go over to my YouTube channel uh, where I've got tons of A-Level Maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.